We're here today in the Chiltern Hills, which is an area of outstanding natural beauty. The River Misbourne is 27 kilometres long, but it doesn't go from source to the sea. It goes from source to a confluence in Denham. Throughout the day, we will be investigating the River Misbourne. It is known as a chalk stream, meaning that it disappears in and out of the water table during wet and dry periods. We should also be looking at whether it fits the typical Bradshaw model and we're going to follow the river from its upper course all the way to its lower course and on the way we'll be checking out cross-sectional areas, flow rates and bed loads of every site that we stop at. It's a stunning river and as you can see by the weather it's a, a lovely day to do it. This is site one where we'll be taking the first set of samples and taking a look at some of the parameters around the river. We're very close to Mobwell Pond in Great Missingdon, which is the source of the River Misbourne. The River Misbourne doesn't have a definitive source, however, because its source is effectively the water table. The valley sides are covered in broadleaf coniferous forest, and because this is a chalk stream, it won't all but fit the Bradshaw River, apart from maybe a few parameters. When the water table rises, this lower part of the valley that we're in is what sprouts the Misbourne. The name comes from the word Winterbourne, which means the river is a, w a winter river. To check out some of the parameters, we need to take some samples from the riverbed. As you can see, just like the Bradshaw model would explain, the bed load is large and angular and has sharp edges, which means it's not been in the water for very long. The flow rate, however, is very slow. It's almost like a small stream at the moment. We're not too far away from the source here, which is in Great Missingdon. Although this environment may look extremely picturesque, there are several anthropogenic and agricultural environmental hazards around the River Misbourne, including this pipe here. This is a raw sewage pipe that takes raw sewage directly into the River Misbourne for the River Misbourne to cope with. The raw sewage can cause algal blooms through a process known as eutrophication, where the algae starves the water of its oxygen, which can be very harmful for some species such as the brown river trout. This is Chalfant St Peter. We're now in the middle course of the River Misbourne. Chalfant St Peter has a population of roughly 14,000 people. To my left is the main road, the A413, which is a connecting road onto the A40 into London. So it's used every day. And to my right is a recycling centre. Both could have harmful effects on the local ecosystem here and biodiversity of the River Misbourne. When comparing the, this middle course of the Misbourne to the Bradshaw model, you can certainly say that some of the channel parameters have changed, but I wouldn't say that it fits exactly to the Bradshaw model. In fact, it's far from it. From what you can see, the river is slightly wider than before, with a flatter bed. The bed load is extremely different than before. Remember the angular chunks that I showed you before. Here, the bed load is a fine brown silt made comprised of leaf litter and chalk as you can see from the white little pieces here in the middle course there are even more environmental hazards for the biodiversity and the ecology in the river Misbourne and the water quality for example this pipe here this drains the A413 directly into the river untreated it can cause increase in pH and it can allow polyaromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, to negatively impact the wildlife in this part of the river, making the water toxic, murky, and full of dangerous heavy metals and sediments. Urban development, such as the project HS2 and Infrastructure, is planning on building two underground tunnels that will cross the Misbourne. This will severely affect the flow of the River Misbourne. Action for the Misbourne is a is an NGO that wants to try and preserve and protect the Misborn. They have a group of volunteers that go out and 
They clean up and litter pick along this part of the Misborn and many others. <laughs> We're here at Denham Country Park, which is a beloved local park in Denham, just outside of the London borough Hillington in Bucks. We're now in the lower course of the Misborn and it is, as you can see, much wider than previously. It's also a lot deeper, so at the moment I'm standing on this log that's been placed here to help encourage deposition and create swamps. Behind me you can see widespread deposition encouraging plants and animals such as moor hens and coots. I would say it follows the Bradshaw model to the T. It is more meandering as I'm just standing before a bend and I can tell you that further downstream from here you might spot an oxbow lake. The river is much more windy and tends to meander more. It's deeper and the bed load, I must say, is very silty, very muddy, and I wouldn't want to fall in it as it's cold and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very good example of a natural habitat formation where um, birds and ducks can lay, lay their eggs and roost here. This is all from deposition and it's come out into the river here. During a time of flood it might wash away but there will always be more, especially when conditions are so good like this. These deposits of organic matter can cause some problems. When they break down they produce sort of a, an increased nutrients in the water. There's a strong smell of sulphur coming from the leaves and the mud and the, and the organic matter in this water that smells. This is the mouth of the River Misborn. Well, in fact, this is the Colne right here. But behind all this foliage and marsh and reed bed is the mouth of the Misborn. The Misborn was such a small influence to this river that it's almost been covered by the vegetation and deposition in this area. This centipede is a great example of the many insects that would live and eat around the Colne. The Misborn is responsible for feeding water into the Colne and the source of the Misborn's waters are the aquifers way back in Great Missingdon in the water table. The water here is extremely important as 20% of London's drinking water comes from the aquifers. If the Misborn is polluted then so would the Colne be at this mouth behind us and we will lose the wildlife that we hold so precious. On just being here for five minutes and having a look in the plants around the river bank I found a freshwater mussel and some freshwater snails. We've come to the end of our journey here in the Colne in Uxbridge, right on the border of London. The Misborn itself, I'd say, doesn't really fit the typical Bradshaw model, but that's what makes it so special. Water levels in the Colne are particularly low at the moment, as you can see. They do tend to rise during periods of flooding. The Colne itself is the green belt that wraps around this, this side of West London. And it's the very boundary of nature that stops urban sprawl from really taking over. These natural habitats are very important to protect, to preserve British wildlife as it is. And I think if we work together to keep these rivers clean, we can have peaceful, tranquil places like this. To summarise and synthesise what we've seen today on our journey from Great Missingdon to Uxbridge, London, we've seen how a river can develop and change through its upper to its lower course and how it can join on to other rivers. But what we saw today was the River Misborn join the confluence of the Colne, which in fact is one of many small aquifers and ponds along the Greenbelt of London. It's an environmentally significant place and it's an ecosystem that we must protect.